Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is going to be doing a fabulous cooking demo that you won't want to miss. So many delicious recipes. Her name is Robin Jeep. I'm meeting her for the first time today. Please welcome her to the show. I've heard about you for years through Dr. Furman, but this is our first time meeting. Yes, yes, I'm so happy to meet you. I've yeah, heard about I, you a lot too. <laughs> well, I love your uh, your 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 other name, the Gut Whisperer, because I actually host something called the GI Health Summit. So, GI Health, Gut Health, Food Sensitivities—that's something that I'm very interested in. Yes, it's uh, it is a big issue, big issue these days. Yeah, and, and I know you, you have more a, and more stuff. So. You have a personal story that got you so interested in this. I do. I do. I have a, a story. I have an issue that's probably pretty rare. I, I mine was triggered. I had GI issues as a kid. I mean, I've kind of, a, I was a C-section baby. I was on lots of antibiotics as a child. I, um, then later I was, I was a model for a long, for about 10, 12 years. And, um, so I had acne. So I took tetracycline antibiotic for 12 years and, my GI tract was pretty messed up and I, I would try to eat vegan and I couldn't because I'd have bloating and I'd have all kinds of digestive issues and it just, it kind of got worse. I had IBS and bloating, but then in 2002, I had a very serious horseback riding accident. I was a horse person. And so I would, I would train horses. I was living in Los Angeles working as a private chef and, uh, I was training a horse and the horse reared up and came over on top of me and shattered my pelvis and uh, very, I was in the hospital for three weeks. I go into this in this cooking video a little bit more, but it was, it was, I was, it was a fatal accident. And I was called the miracle patient at UCLA because I had some kind of spontaneous healing in the uh, ER when they were doing CAT scans. And so after that, my GI issues really ramped up. I mean, really ramped up. And I was very scared. I didn't know what to do. I was in pain. I, it was just, it was very bad. So I started going to doctors and I went to numerous doctors. Oh, and the, the medical industry, just traditional medical industry, um, could just was, they, they couldn't help me. They just put me on proton pump inhibitors, which I was on for 12 years. And those are very, very damaging. And one of the problems with proton pump inhibitors is that they reduce your stomach acid. And the stomach acid is extremely important for, our, of course, our digestion. And probably a lot of you don't know this, that when the food goes from your, small, from your stomach into your small intestine, it has to be a certain pH, acidic pH. And what that does is that triggers the pancreas to produce enzymes and the gallbladder to produce bile. And if you don't have the right pH, it's going to start messing things up downstream. So, and then because you don't have a lot of stomach acid from the proton pump inhibitors, a lot of people start having osteoporosis after that because you need the acid to be able to absorb the calcium from your food. So, Anyway, that, that, that was a big issue. So I was on that for 12 years until I developed a sensitivities to it and could no longer take it, thank God. And then um, it just, it, it just it continued. I ended up working for Dr. Furman. I, um, after a, a few of year, two years after the accident, I started, I read Eat to Live and I started eating that way as much as I could. And it helped me, I got relief. And I was so excited that I wrote a, a summary for a business plan for Joel. And he was developing his business back then because that was in 2004. And so he and Lisa, his wife, invited me to come live with them and um, help them develop their, the, the new business they were doing. So I moved up there and he realized I was really sick. And so he started helping me. with. I had to do water fasting because my GI tract was so inflamed. To bring down the inflammation, I would do water fasting for several days. And then I would do a lot of blending of my food because I wasn't getting, I really had failure to thrive and I wasn't getting enough nu nutrients from my food. I wasn't absorbing and assimilating. And so he taught me different techniques to do, to use 
to help me digest my food. So Joel really did save my life because I was going down pretty fast. And one of the, the main reason that one of the things that I have to impress on people on this talk is that with gut issues, which are very prevalent these days, and if, you, if you're familiar with uh, Dr. Zach Bush, he has some very good studies that he shows he can overlay, he has graphs, and he can show autism, uh, celiac disease, all these different, different and gut things that are starting with the gut. And he can overlay the glyphosate, started using the glyphosate a lot in the 90s. And so, and it's even type 2 diabetes. And he can lay over the amount proportionate to the amount of glyphosate being used. And so glyphosate being patented as an antibiotic kills our microbiome. I mean, it damages it and kills it. And our microbiome, as people probably are becoming more and more aware, rules everything. I mean, endocrine, uh, GI, brain, mental, uh, energy, it, it controls everything. So now we're seeing a lot, a lot more people with these, with these issues, and they it tends to be a GI issue, even if it's depression or anxiety or um, even, even type 2 diabetes and uh, gluten sensitivity, even if you're not celiac, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, acid reflux. So anyway, these issues are so prevalent now. And the problem is that if it is not dealt with, then you can get to a place where you really can't even digest your food. And if you can't digest your food, well, you, you just, you know, you're going to not live as long. And so the whole the whole food plant-based eating is vitally important because it is, and I always call it nutritarian because I really like Dr. Furman's philosophy of uh, being, you know, the most, most micronutrient bang for your calorie buck. And so the key is to get as many micronutrients into your body as possible because without these micronutrients, your body does not have the energy or the wherewithal for it to do the healing process that's needed. And, um, I, when I first started, I've been teaching, I've been teaching, um, basically nutritarian style eating since 2004. And, um, it's, I, I, as I've been teaching it, I just lost my train of thought there, but I've been teaching it for a long time and I've been introducing people to this. And then I get people now more and more people who can't eat this way. They can't eat whole food plant-based because they can't digest the food. They, they start having all of the bloating problems. And that's a big issue because you need to eat this way to be able to basically survive or, you know, have a decent quality of life. So what I've done as I've taught this is I've learned through myself because I have to, I have to eat a very specific diet is how to what foods are the easiest to digest? What foods are the most nutrient dense? Because you really need to get those. And then how to transition to eating this way. So that's, that's one thing. But then there are, you do need to find out the source, the cause of the issues. And it's like I said, let's just say, for example, if you take a lot of proton pump inhibitors, you've taken those for a while. Well, Part of what the, what the acid in the stomach does is it protects you from bacteria. So now you're trying to eat whole food plant-based and you're trying to eat a lot of raw vegetables, but you don't have the protection, the stomach acid to destroy the bacteria going in. And so you start to often start to get bacterial infections in your GI tract. And uh, this, you know, this can be a source. This is a pretty common source of problems. Parasites. They are not as common. It's becoming more common in the United States. It used to be in the United States that we didn't really have a lot of parasite problems like they did in third world countries. But because we're now, because of globalization, we're being more exposed to that. And of course, again, if you're on proton pump inhibitors, you're not, you don't have the stomach acid. So you'd be more prone possibly to parasites. And then the, uh, the, the fungus issue with the candida 
that is a problem because people grow up eating processed foods and a lot of sugar. And so the, and then they're on antibiotics and have, you know, then the microbiome gets completely out of balance. And we are meant to have candida and we are meant to have some fungus, but then you get into an issue that's called dysbiosis, which is where your microbiome is out of balance. And so these, all of these things are, can be, can be the causes of the issues, the GI issues, which can cause anxiety, depression, and all of that. So um, I'm just looking here to see. I've got no, there's so much. I try to stay in order. And uh, so I can, people can follow this. Um, so those are, those are some of the issues that, oh, okay, here it is. So digestive dysfunction may be an overactive immune response. Oftentimes it's an overactive immune response. So that's where we get into, do you have, do you have uh, dysbiosis? Do you have out of balance microbiome? Do you have um, opportunistic bacteria that are taking advantage of the situation? Because if you've taken a lot of antibiotics, everything's going to be out of balance. And so then you get opportunistic bacteria that can be pathogenic and it can also become pathogenic when it's out of balance. Are you following me? Can you follow this? Am I making sense? Well, I'm following it. Let me see if the viewers can follow in this. I mean, there are, there are a few questions like, would bacterial infection possibly be related to H. pylori? Uh, one of the yes, live viewers is yes, asking. Yes. Yes. H. pylori, the science, the science says it's about 50% of the population. I think it's higher. Um, H. pylori is H. pylori is a pathogenic bacteria, but they allow for a certain amount uh, of the bacteria where it's not considered pathogenic. We didn't used to have H. pylori in this country, but now we do. So some doctors will say any level of H. pylori they believe is bad and they should get rid of it. Other doctors say, well, low amount. It, it depends on your doctor. Uh, a lot of these things, as I said, this is since the 90s, this kind of stuff has started ramping up. So this is new science. You know, only since the 90s, we've been really starting to see this stuff. And it's just it's, it's gotten it's really ramping up. So a lot of doctors and the ones that know the most about it are going to be the functional medicine doctors. But they're still, you know, we're still in the kind of experimental stage. And with H. pylori, I think it's. I think it's up to 80% of the cases cannot be resolved with antibiotics because H. pylori is able to become resistant to antibiotics. So the natural treatments seem to be more effective. And there are several, there's mastic gum, there's DGL, that's diglyceride licorice, where they've removed a compound that raises the blood pressure. So that's been removed. So it doesn't raise your blood pressure. Uh, there's also something called matula tea. Um, so yeah, there's some different herbal things that you can take and you can take combinations of it. Uh, but let me go back to, let me just go back to what, what how they, how this can be. So, um, once some of the things that can trigger the immune response can be undigested food particles getting into the bloodstream. Well, that would be from what's called leaky gut or permeable gut. And so that is coming, that is very linked to the glyphosate issue. And if you think of the tight junctions in the gut, they're tight like this, and you have a lot of inflammation, then they begin to spread and the holes get too big. There has to be some holes to let the digested food particles in, but the holes get too big and then they start letting in undigested food particles, bacteria and other things. So that's going to trigger your immune, an immune response. That's one issue. Another one could be environmental toxins, which can be everything from glyphosate, other herbicides, just, you know, any, uh, do you paint with oil paints? Have you been exposed to chemicals? Um, and then it's in the air. And so that's environmental toxins. And then of course, vaccines. And you can have in a family, you can have children, and one child gets a vaccine and the others didn't. And that's going to get into, 
it can get into uh, whether they were on antibiotics beforehand, were they C-section, uh, what was going on with the mother when she's carrying the baby in the womb, when it was when the baby was conceived. Um, there just can be all, many, all fact, so many factors involved in genetic factors, why one child is affected by vaccines and the other child is not. Uh, then you've got mycotoxins as toxic mold exposure. And one of the problems with toxic mold exposure is as people are trying to save money on utilities, they have started making homes tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, when I, I'm 67, so a lot of the older houses, like some of my great aunts and people like that, that I, they would have transom windows. I'm from Texas. I was raised in Texas. So they had transom windows. So you had, they, the houses were designed for airflow. Windows were open a lot in these houses. They didn't have air conditioning years and years ago. And so these houses had, had, had you know, a really good air exchange with the outside and inside. And so you had less mold, you had fewer mold issues, mold issues. But now they make everything so tight, so airtight. And they, the sheetrock has mold spores. So anytime you have any kind of leak that happens, then you know, the mold starts, the mold starts growing. So our homes are more toxic than they used to be when you had all this airflow. Let's, if, you had, if you had a leak and you have a home, you've got windows open and air flowing through all the time it's going to dry out. Um, and then central air coils, they can grow your mold on central air coils. And again, you can have one, you can have a couple in a house and the, all of a sudden the mother gets, starts getting really sick. Maybe one child gets sick, but the other children don't. And they find out it's mold, but she's sensitive to mold. And that other child's sensitive to mold. And there are genetic tests that can be done to see if you have a propensity of being sensitive to mold. And so it used to, but a lot of times people are considered hypochondriacs because one person says, I'm not sick. You're sick all the time. I don't understand why you're sick. We live in the same house and so forth. And then you've got the microbial pathogens, which I talked about, bacteria, fungi, virus, viruses, and then sometimes parasites. So the big question is, why do we have these conditions in the first place? Well, I explained to you about the houses. That's one thing. And some of the environmental toxins. But a lot of these things we could recover from and handle it. But early, poor diet. And so that's another thing that started happening really in the 80s. Uh, is all this processed food. All this, everybody was eating McDonald's and Happy Meals for kids. I remember my daughter always, I wouldn't let her have Happy Meals. Sometimes we'd buy the Happy Meals just to get the toys and, and throw the Happy Meal away. But um, it, it was just, it was atrocious the way people started eating in the 80s. And so um, convenience foods, people, and, and there's a reason people have started eating this way is people are having to work more out longer hours. And, uh, you know, it used to be that just your father worked and he made enough money. I mean, even if he was, you know, a plumber, or he wasn't a lawyer or a doctor, he made enough money. His wife didn't have to work. She could, she was raising the kids. Uh, part of one of the studies I've read about the women's liberation movement, a lot of it came from out of necessity is that women were not getting paid equally to men. And so they started uh, protesting because they had to go to work. They, they didn't get to stay home and take care of their kids. So with, with the advent of all of that, we needed the convenience food. So that's when all these people started eating all these fast foods. And so your first five years of life, uh, this is one of the things I learned from Joel, I mean, and there's scientific studies behind it. The first five years of a child's life can determine whether they're going to get cancer later on. The first five years are so important. So early poor diet. I mean, you can circumvent that with doing a whole food plant, plant-based diet. And something very interesting is that if you ate a poor diet as a child and you grow up and you go whole food plant-based, you've got to stay on that diet the rest of your life in order to have the protection. But if you grew up, let's say in a whole food plant-based family, and you grew up the first five years of your life eating whole food plant-based, um, you, you, you don't have to be as strict later on in life because you got the foundation. 
So early poor diet is one of the reasons we have these conditions in the first place. Lifestyle, you know, just you know, poor lifestyle, genetic predisposition, uh, medications, especially antibiotics and acid blockers, being a C-section baby. And then there's something called the MTHFR gene variant, and um, which affects the detoxification pathway. And this, this makes it difficult to, to detoxify from heavy metals. And it also causes your homocysteine levels to go up. And it causes people to be more sensitive and they can have GI issues and they can have autism. And actually I am on, on the autistic spectrum disorder, uh, uh, the spectrum, I can't even think of the word, but anyway, I have, I have low level autism and it's much better. I was a headbanger as a child, but once I started eating whole food plant-based, I don't really have, I don't have hardly any symptoms of autism anymore. Maybe I don't smile as much um, as some people, but I don't really have the symptoms. And a lot of the dis learning disabilities I had just went away. And then a uh, mold sensitivity, we mentioned that. And then emotional trauma and stress. This plays a huge role in gut, gut health, especially childhood, emotional trauma and stress. And it sets up very unhealthy patterns that the, the, the gut starts to react in an un, at a young age. And then as you get older, it's still reacting, even though you're not in that situation anymore. So basically any one of these issues can cause poor nutrient absorption and dehydration, which further impairs the immune system and may trigger secondary issues such as, now these are your secondary issues, autoimmune disease, MCAS, which is, which is mast cell activation disorder, which I've been diagnosed with. And that's your mast cells are your first line of defense. It's a very primitive defense force in our systems. And it releases mediators such as histamine, cytokines. And um, when you have mast cell activation disorder, those mast cells are inappropriately activated. And so they just start firing over, you know, maybe you eat, um, for example, I'm eating, you know, I can eat avocado. And then one day I can't eat avocado anymore. I start having uh, I start having a reaction and it's, it, the, it's called MCAS. You can Google it, learn all about MCAS. Okay. So it's a, and it's, it's mast cell activation syndrome. So anyway, it can be secondary issues can be that cancers and other chronic diseases. And, uh, and this is something interesting with uh, Dr. Zach Bush when who's, he's a triple board certified physician, endocrinologist, palliative care and internal medicine, brilliant man. One of the, I think one of our great thinkers today, he's also a philosopher. So he, uh, when he was seeing patients, he was very excited. He had learned from Caldwell uh, Campbell and uh, I mean, Caldwell Essestein and Colin Campbell. He had learned about the whole food plant-based eating. And so he started putting his patients on that. And he had great results with about 30% of his patients. I mean, their health issues just resolved. They were great. Then another 30% did better, still had some health issues. And then 40% did poorly and some even became worse. So that's kind of what I started seeing is that um, a lot of people just, they couldn't, they just can't eat this way. They try, they want, and they're already so sensitive, have so many food sensitivities and, and, and so many gut issues. So the thing is that time is of the essence. Uh, as the more time a person suffers from nutritional deficiencies from any one or several of these bacterial, viral, environmental, or fungal issues, their immune system becomes compromised. And then the pathogens proliferate. And, and, and then what these pathogens do, especially the bacteria, is they build things called biofilms. And that kind of scum you get on your teeth when you haven't brushed your teeth, that is the biofilm and bacteria live in that. And that's that causes plaque. So it's a plaque. And actually they find that now that the plaque in the arteries, when they have now dissected this plaque, it's filled with bacteria. It's, those are biofilms. And the bacteria, they think, are what are causing the ruptures in the arteries. And so these biofilms, these, the longer you have these bacteria and these issues, 
the more time they have to fill, build biofilms and the biofilms protect them. They can hide in those biofilms. And what they do is then they, they release periodically. And so when they'll have a periodic release, then you start to have reactions. And so, but there's still, most of them are protected and there can be fungi in there. There can be bacteria. There can be uh, viruses in there and they all work together. I mean, these are little sentient beings and they want to live. So when you have these biofilms, when you've had these, these pathogenic situations, the longer it lasts, the more protected they become. And then it gets where the antibiotics cannot even penetrate. The herbs can't penetrate. Nothing can penetrate. So now they have things called biofilm disruptors, herbal biofilm disruptors or herbal and enzymes and their different types. And those are really hard to take because, well, what happens then when they disrupt the biofilm, then these bacteria and these pathogens are released in abundance. So then your system has to deal with it. And so you really feel lousy and you don't want to keep taking this biofilm disruptor because it makes you feel so bad. So that's why it's very, very important to get on top of this as quickly as possible, as early as possible. And, um, and, and uh, junk food vegan is, is also an issue as well. This doesn't work. I mean, you might as well go out, and, I don't know, go eat Popeye's chicken if you're going to be a junk food vegan because the key here, and I cannot impress this upon you, is nutrient density, nutrient density, whole foods. You've got to have the whole foods. And um, that's what's going to keep you going and it's going to help your body, body uh, fight things and, and heal and repair. So micronutrient density, uh, a density because we have most people have plenty of macronutrient density they have way too much too many macronutrients being protein uh fat carbohydrate so they're getting a lot of that that's not really an issue it's the micronutrients which are your vitamins minerals antioxidants plant chemicals all those things which really don't have calories so there are some tests uh, that doctors do there's the SIBO breath test now you want both the lactulose and the glucose test. And you have to do those on separate days. And that's to see if you have small bowel uh, bacterial overgrowth. And you're really not supposed to have a whole lot of bacteria in your small intestine. At least that's what we know now. And if you've got a lot of, if you've got a lot of bacteria in your small intestine, that can cause a lot of problems, diarrhea, irritable bowel, IV, all kinds of things. So um, then the vitamin D level, vitamin D level, that's critical to a robust immunity. Um, and you can, and you can request a lab from, from a request from a local lab, me having this, my issues with the mast cell activation disorder, and also with COVID, I'd like to keep my vitamin D levels up around 80 in the eighties. And they will, your doctor will tell you if you're over some doctors, some will say 50, um, some will say over 30 is okay. Um, I, I'm not a doctor, but I keep mine up in the eighties and I take, I take eight to 10,000. I use a vitamin D a day. And I do know that Anthony Fauci takes 8,000. I use a vitamin D a day. So anyway, I, you know, I can't tell you what to do, but that's what I do. And, uh, and keeping my vitamin D and I've never, I haven't had COVID and I'm not vaccinated. So then there is another, this is very interesting. This doctor, very expensive. Uh, he's, an Af he's an African doctor. He practiced medicine. He's a tropical disease specialist in the United States for 50 years. Then he went back to Nigeria and opened a medical school and he has a lab there. Okay, when you have lab tests done in the United States, what they're doing is they're set to, it, 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 they're looking for H. pylori, they're looking for uh, different types of different types of bacteria, different types of viruses, different types of fungi. And that's all they're looking for. That's it. They're doing it on basically uh, DNA sequencing. And so gene markers, they're looking for gene markers. Well, this doctor in Africa, and in Africa, believe me, they know bacteria and they know parasites. They do the microscope. He, he and his trained technicians so you send over your stool and your blood test and they culture it so that stuff will grow. 
And then they sit there themselves and look under a microscope and they're not looking for any certain thing. They're just looking to see what you've got and they know all this stuff. And so they then can see what you have and then they give the report back. And then what they use is they use um, African fresh plant juices, which they cultivate from the, um, from near the equator in Africa, they, they, they forage it wild and then they have cultivated plants and they create these juices in the lab at the medical school and they ship them over fresh to the United States. Very expensive. The blood test and the lab test, the blood and stool test is a thousand dollars. And then the plant chemicals, I mean, I did a three week treatment and that was $3,000. And I really needed more treatments, but I just couldn't afford to keep doing it. But I'm probably going to do it again because it was, it was the most effective, but you've just got to do it for a long time. And I even considered going over to Nigeria, but now certainly not the time to go over there. So anyway, I couldn't go because I'm not vaccinated. And I can't, and getting on the plane. So anyway, um, so anyway, more and more physicians are learning how to recognize these pathologies. But again, it's kind of baby science. I mean, it's here in the States, it's sort of new science and your functional medicine doctors are going to be the ones that are best at it. You want one that's had real, you know, a lot of experience. And um, so one of the deals with a lot of the functional medicine doctors is they're basically most, a lot of them follow the paleo diet. And so, and I mean, I have one, I see even, I think, he even recommends a carnivore diet, but he's good. He's really good. So one of the things you have to do is you have to understand that this is what they have, what they recommend and what they know. And you just have to stick to what you know and what works for you. And um, then another thing I wanted to say is so eating this, eating whole food plant based when you have gut issues, cooked vegetables are far easier to digest than raw vegetables. Zucchini is one of your easiest things to digest unless, of course, you have a food sensitivity to it. So I do all kinds of, which you're going to see in the demo, I'm doing some foods that are cooked. Uh, one of them is a tomato and potato niçoise. So some people are sensitive to nightshades, so that one wouldn't work. But the other one is a fast, a one skillet meal. And then I do lots of soups. Soups and stews are very easy on the gut, easy to digest. Uh, when, when having to transition to eating beans, any kind of legumes, legumes, there are certain starches, resistant starches in the legumes. And so like, if you see the calories on a can of beans or whatever, you're not going to really get that many calories because a lot of it's just not digestible by your, you can't digest it. We can't digest that because it's a certain type of starch we don't digest, but a certain microbiome a certain bacteria will digest it. And that bacteria, it's th what it produces as a byproduct, which is called butyrate, is very, very powerful anti-cancer. So beans, are, beans are, I think, are the number one superfood. That's what I'm going to say. It's, it's legumes are the number one superfood. But if you have not been eating legumes in your life or maybe for years, and you start trying to eat legumes again, you don't have that bacteria because it's the food you eat that cultivates the bacteria. So, and that bacteria wants to live. And so when you start to eat legumes and you haven't, and you get, you bloat, then you may start with one teaspoon a day and work up until you can eat one, like Dr. Greger recommends one and a half cups. And I was eating because I was so restricted in what I was eating. And I was eating up to like three to four cups a day. And I told Dr. Furman and he was like, oh, no, 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 no. Way too much because it slows down your digestive process. So one and a half cups seems to be the magic number. And um, cultivates the colonies. Yes. So basically what you eat cultivates the colonies of bacteria that you have. And this bacteria, they want to live. So a lot of times when you're trying to switch from eating a convenience diet or standard American diet, that you've got bacteria that likes to eat meat, that likes to eat things that are fried in oil, likes to eat sugars and all that stuff. So when you start trying to switch to a whole food plant-based diet, that bacteria is not happy. 
And that bacteria is going to try to make you keep eating this way. It can actually send signals to your brain to tell you to go get some Milano, mint Milano cookies or whatever, you know, ice cream or, you know, whatever meat. And so you have to deal with that as you transition. And I mean, that's, that's just one of the things that you deal with. I mean, there's so many different sort of addictive things, but that's one is, is cultivating new bacteria and going through that transition. And so what I recommend to people who are, who have, I do do, I do um, coaching and help people with, you know, what to eat, how to fix it, how to prepare it and so forth. And I have, you know, kind of plans because there's, there's a lot more to all this, but uh, starting with cooked vegetables, eating cooked vegetables. If you've got gut issues, stop trying to eat salad if, 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 and, and see what happens. Doing the process of elimination, say, okay, I'm not going to eat salad for a week. I'm just going to eat my vegetables cooked. See what that does. You might go, wow, I don't even have any cramping anymore. I don't even have any bloating. So you have to kind of start playing around with that. And this is, this is what I do help people do. Now, with my situation, just to tell you, um, I've, you know, I've been to 11 gastroenterologists. I've been to a lot of, seen a lot of doctors. And uh, finally, the last doctor I've seen is a big proponent of meat. And, and, and I understand this because some people, because their guts are so messed up, meat is not good for the gut, but it doesn't have fiber, so they don't get all the bloating. And sometimes when you're doing the transition to whole food plant-based, you may have to eat some wild salmon. You may have to eat some, uh, you know, uh, pasture egg whites because you got to get, you do have to get some protein. And if you can't eat the legumes and you can't eat, you know, nuts and seeds and you're having trouble, then you may have to eat some of these things, which are the lesser of the evils to transition yourself. So, um, so with my situation, um, mine has been so difficult that one of the things that the latest doctor, this one in California uh, said, I think you may have something called reflex dystrophy. It's reflex something dystrophy. And he said, a lot of people who have accidents have this. And any of you all who have had accidents, um, surgeries, major surgeries, difficult childbirth, some of these things can trigger all of this kind of stuff. And he said that uh, that's where your nerves go haywire. And I was crushed you know, in my sacral region, my pelvis. So that could have happened then. He said, for you to reset that he said, I'm going to recommend you just, you move outdoors. That's how I came up with the nature chef. I pretty much live outdoors. I get up in the morning around six in the morning and I go outside immediately and I stay and not everybody has this luxury, but I'm 67 and I do have this luxury. I stay outside most of the day. I, as you're going to see in this demo, that's my makeshift kitchen. I cook outside. I, um, oh, it's called reflex sympathetic dystrophy. And so um, I, I, I do everything outside. I get sun, I'm tan. Uh, it's amazing how it, this has helped me so much. The sun actually uh, charges your mitochondria and your mitochondria is very important. That's your energy center. That's what produces your energy currency. You need this to heal and repair. And so I can feel not so good. I wake up in the morning feeling not so good. I go outside an hour, two hours after being outside, I feel good again. So we are designed to be outside. We have to, we have to go back to our design. That's what we're doing with the whole food plant-based thing. We're going back to our design. So, you know, this is kind of advanced, but getting, certainly getting more outside. So I sort of have a, have a, a thing that I've put down here, kind of a, um, uh, a, a, trans, a transition into this way of living. And um, transition. Okay, so like your first step would be a whole food plant-based nutritarian diet. That's getting all of the G-bombs, greens, berries, onions, mushrooms, and seeds. Beans also. So um, in this, in this diet and eating this way, some people, I can't eat mushrooms. So you may not be able to eat all of it. I can't eat berries. 
but getting these things in your diet every day and whether it's cooked, whether it's small amounts, whether you still have to eat some animal products, but they should be the highest quality pasture raised wild salmon, uh, those things. Um, 30 minutes, this is in 30 minutes a day outdoors barefooted barefooted because the electrons coming up from the earth were designed to be barefooted. The electrons coming up from the earth go into the feet and they neutralize free radicals because those of us with all these issues have a lot of free radical oxidative stress going on. So we need everything we can get to neutralize that. So, um, so going out there 30 minutes a day, outdoors barefooted, uh, and they do have some shoes that, that are called earthing shoes that I got a pair. I don't know how good they are, but I mean, they, seem, they say they're good. And 15 minutes of sunshine between 12 a.m. And, and 12 p.m. No sunglasses, no sunscreen. That sun is vitally important. So that's, that's the first. And I don't recommend people when they're transitioning, I don't recommend, don't worry about exercise. If you, the first, this first three weeks, if you exercise already, you go walking or whatever, keep doing that. But if you don't, don't add that because that's just, you know, that's you adding too much is a formula for failure. So we do like first three weeks, you just do the whole food plant-based going, you know, getting some barefooted time and some sunshine time. That's it for three weeks. Then once you start to feel better, if you're still not feeling better, if you're going, still going through detox and things like that, you don't want to add the exercise yet. Then the second one is to walk 30 minutes or more three times a week in nature, whether that's in a park, because we are, you have to think, we are wired, we are wired for nature. We are wired for this way of eating. And so one of the reasons that we are sick is we live inside all the time. We're eating food that we weren't designed for. So it's normal that we're sick. It's not abnormal. It's normal. So what you've got to go is, is reverse all of this. And so then, um, then st the third step is additions. So if you still have digestive skin, allergy, anxiety, or fatigue issues, you want to do a temporary elimination whole food plant-based diet to determine specific food sensitivities. And this is where if you can't get the beans and the things you need to get enough protein, you're going to have to be eating probably some wild salmon and some egg whites. Um, and then, so you want to eliminate all processed foods. I mean, everything processed, any vegan process, whatever. Uh, wheat, gluten containing foods and grains and uh, all grains except for quinoa and nightshade veggies. You just wipe all that out. And you want to see what happens. And then you want to start adding, slowly you start to add one item every three days back into the diet to see if that works or not. And then, you know, it, it, it goes on and on. There's certain, you want to temporarily stop all supplements except for like vit your vitamin D, your methyl B12, your kelp iodine, and your vegan DHA EPA. And I do recommend methyl B12 for people with gut issues because it's already processed. And zinc, 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 zinc is definitely important. And then uh, those nutrient enhancing food technology like blending, crushing, which you're gonna see me crushing the greens in the demo, water sauteing, eating variety, uh, legume transition technique, soups and stews, food cooked with liquid. That's very easy, much easier to digest. Then lifestyle habits, the fresher the veggies, the better from a garden or farmer's market is best. For example, I live in the country and we have a big organic garden. I am blessed to be able to live this way. I have not always been able to live this way, but thanks to my partner, Mark, I am able to. So eat some legumes every with every meal. Start with a small amount, work up to one and a half cups a day. Eat squash with every meal. Uh, winter squash, zucchini, yellow squash, very easy to digest. Lots of what's called soluble fiber which is the easiest to digest, the insoluble fiber, which the greens and stuff have more of that, which is harder to digest. Uh, hemp seeds are easier to digest. Uh, some people can't do the nuts. Slow and thorough chewing, extremely important. Chew your food to a paste. Intermittent fasting can be very helpful because it gives your body from the time you ate dinner 
till the, the next meal you eat, it gives your time, body time to do some rest and re digest, rest and repair. Uh, be calm and grateful while eating. I mean, be grateful that you're learning how to eat this way. Uh, clean filtered water. You want to eat at, uh, eat three, at least three hours before bedtime. That, that'll make a huge difference. Uh, so nature, solar power healing. That's what I was talking about. Rebounding. Don't go crazy with rebounding, but you know, some gentle jumping does help with the lymphatic system. It also helps with digestion, walking, hiking, and then meditation, and then uplifting videos and reading material. And then here's one of the things that is the key. Push yourself. Push yourself to eat properly. You are, we are in incredible beings. We are very strong. We are very resilient. Don't coddle yourself. Push yourself. I mean, don't be mean, but push yourself like an athlete pushes themselves. You know, give yourself a little push. Go a little bit beyond. And, uh, but don't do, don't go too beyond. You know, do it in a healthy way. And then um, anxiety support. Uh, there's some things you can take. CBD oil, saffron extract, and of course, breathing. And these are, again, these are, these are um, symptoms. They, they, they treat the symptoms. So treating the symptom can be helpful while you're going through this process. And so, uh, so with proper nutrition, all of these things create an incredible healing machine. And so you're, there's a, hand, a handout, which I, AJ, I guess has posted which has the names of some of these doctors. Uh, Dr. Furman has a Eat to Live Retreat Center and he does a lot of um, cutting edge stuff there. He helps a lot of people with this, but of course it's very expensive to go there to his retreat center, but it, it, he's very good. Then, uh, uh, and I don't have a list right now of a lot. I go to Dr. Lampkin in Oklahoma City and he does see people all over the United States with telemed. And he does a lot of the testing like the GI map which is a really good, uh, it's the most comprehensive stool test of all that's out there that really is, it's the best one as of now. And it's called the GI map, GI-MAP. And then uh, Glenn Wilcox is the one who's the contact for the African physician. And then this Marcus Ettinger, he's the one, he's, he's a genius. He's just absolutely a genius. And he's the one who told me I've got to go outside. And it was the first person that ever told me that. So these are some, uh, these are some good, good doctors. And then I do the therapeutic new, uh, nutritarian culinary coaching to help people through all of this. So I think I've pretty much covered it. Um, I will tell you, if you do have GERD, uh, I've seen a lot of people that I've taught, I'm sure you've seen this, Chef AJ, is that when they start eating whole food plant-based, gone. Most people who start eating whole food plant-based, their GERD goes away unless they have a hiatal hernia or they have some other issue like H. pylori or something behind it. But anyway, so that's kind of it in a nutshell about the, the, how the GI tract and how important this way of eating is. And I am, I do not charge, but I do, you know, I ask if somebody will give me a donation so that I can keep doing this. And I don't charge because I believe that your health is really a divine right. We have the right to health. So when people are grateful, you know, I've had people give me, you know, large chunks of money and then I've had people give me no money, but I just want to be there and I want to be available to support people in, on this journey. And uh, as someone who's gone the, the extra mile, I've been at this for a long time, I can shed a lot of light. And I'm also I do a lot of research when I'm working with somebody and I try to find the appropriate physicians and, you know, whatever they need. So that's um, gut issues. It's a big, it's a big nutshell. I've got Mark over here giving me notes to tell me <laughs> what to say. But uh, anyway, so probably we ought to get on to the, the cooking video because uh, it's going to show. Well, thank you. And guys, I want to, that was, a, I'm going to have to watch that again and take notes, but there is a question right now that since you are a chef and a forager, can you tell us how you use dandelion and purslane? 
dandelion and purslane, well, I use them, they can both be used in a salad, but when I do greens, I'm always picking uh, the greens and I just throw my dandelion in with all my greens that I'm going to cook because I have to eat cooked things. And purslane, unfortunately, I'm no longer able to eat purslane. I react to purslane, but Mark eats purslane and purslane's wonderful steam. Purslane's wonderful chopped in a salad. Um, it's just, it's just like, it's another green to add to your food. Yeah, I love purslane. I, I, I was I teaching in Mexico. It's very common there. So guys, Robin recorded the video. I watched it. It's fabulous because she wasn't sure how stable her internet would be. So I'm going to share screen and play it. And Robin, did you want to come back afterwards and there, if there's any questions or should we end it with the video? It's completely your call. Um, I'm going to, if they've got questions now, I think we can end it with the video, but you, they've got, you have my contact information to pass on to people. If you gave it to me, I, I'll put it, I put it in the show notes yes. or I, I will put it in the show notes. Yes, it, please do because people can contact me. Um, through you, email, I, is that what you prefer? Yes. Email. And then we'll set up, um, then what we can set up. I'm trying to see. If I, oh, it enlivened foods at gmail.com. Then we can set up a time just email me and then we'll set up a time to talk or do a Great. zoom call or however they want to do this. Nice. I'll make sure I put it in the show notes. Well, thank you so much. And I'm glad you're doing so much better with your GI and, and thanks to oh, Dr. Furman. Oh yeah. And people, and people, when they contact me, be sure to reference that you heard, heard from AJ, chef AJ. And I want to say thank you so much, chef AJ for having me on the show and for me to be able to share this, what I believe is an extremely important message. Well, it's been my pleasure. And we've gotten lots of compliments on your beautiful hair because I don't know if you can see the chat, but. <laughs> well, thank you. That's, you know, I'm sure it has to do with the nutrients that I'm, that I'm eating. And I am, believe me, folks, I am very compromised. I mean, I can only eat most cooked vegetables, beans, avocado, and that's it. I mean, that, and nuts and seeds, certain nuts and seeds. And that's, that's all I can eat, but I do, I'm, I'm the healthiest. I've been told that I'm the healthiest sick person <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, great. Thank you. Can you, can you eat vinegar at all? No, no, nothing fermented. I can't do anything from it. And a lot of these people, I'm sure there's some people nodding their heads as I say that. And so anyway, if you contact me, we can go over all of this because I know all the, I've got to know all the common triggers and you know, I can usually size somebody up pretty quickly, just finding out what their issues are. You know, we go over, I have a lot of questions I ask. And um, so I usually kind of know where to send them since, you know, I'm not, I don't even, uh, I, I will tell some people each, you know, each person is unique and I will tell some people some supplements, but a lot of mostly what I like to do is I like to put them with a physician, a health professional that can, can really help them. And then I help them with the transition and the diet and so forth. Great. Well, thanks so much. And thanks all of you for watching. This show's not over. We're going to play a cooking demo, but I do want to tell people to please come back tomorrow when my guest is, uh oh, I should have looked it up. I should know this, but I didn't have it on the right page. I don't always memorize everything. Let's see. Ah, another, we have cooking demo from Donna Perone. So that should be great. Thanks so much, Robin, and enjoy the cooking demo, guys. Well, thank you. Thank it you. It is my Bye -bye. pleasure. Let me uh, share screen here. Hopefully that'll work. If you guys can tell me. Can you make it bigger? How's that? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Hi, I'm the nature chef, Robin G, and I'm also known as the gut whisperer. Right now, I'm preparing some gut soothing food for to soothe the GI tract. You may be wondering why I'm called the gut whisperer. Well, I can tell you. I have had GI problems most of my life, but you know, they were a typical kind of irritable bowel syndrome, and um, I had a very severe accident oh, in that's cool. I was training a horse that reared up and came over oh. backwards on me and fell between my legs, shattered my pelvis, fractured my
I don't have sound. Yes, I'm here. I am. Your family. What? Helping them develop yes. their business. No, and that was when Joel realized how ill I was. But let me give you some background, go back even farther. I've been a, a professional chef for over 35 years. And then I became a private chef and worked for different celebrities. I cooked for Paul McCartney, yes. Steele, uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov. Uh, I was Jeff Lynn's private chef of Electric Light Orchestra. That's where I got to meet Paul. And so I was doing some high performance food. It's still, it wasn't nutritarian food, but I was moving in that direction. And then later I tried to become, well, several times I tried to become a vegan and I never could because I had terrible bloating and terrible GI issues whenever I tried to become a vegan. So then after the accident, of course, everything went haywire. And Joel realized I was really ill, and he started teaching me how to prepare my food, how to water fast, and he would teach me how to prepare my food so that I could digest it. I had to water fast quite a bit because my GI tract was so inflamed just to bring down the inflammation, I had to water fast. But let's get to the cooking right now. I'll carry on with this a little in a little bit. But right now, I want to tell you what we're doing here. We are, I hope you all should have these recipes, and um, we have, we're going to do, first of all, the thing we're going to start with are the Normandy style beans with garlic and herbs. So I use a lot of garlic. Uh, one of the reasons is we have a lot of chiggers out here where we live in the Ozarks, and garlic does seem to help with the chiggers. And garlic is also antibacterial, and um, so then I use a lot of herbs, and I use, and here we have oregano. Oh, no, this one doesn't have oregano. This has marjoram, and it has thyme, and it has rosemary. Rosemary is really good for the brain, for brain health, and there have been studies on rosemary and Alzheimer's. And then the marjoram is about as powerful of an antibacterial and antiviral as oregano, which is very powerful. And then I have um, thyme, which is also going to be an antibacterial, anti-parasite. Uh, so these are the, so I use a lot of a lot of herbs. Fresh herbs are really important because they're medicinal and they make the food taste really good. So right here, I've soaked these beans. These beans have been soaked for probably oh, 15 or 16 hours. Is it better at it? And these are pinto beans. Now, normally they don't eat pinto beans in Normandy, but I wanted to fix pinto beans because we are going to eat the beans. And so I'm going to just put these together and put them in the Instant Pot. So I'm going to put... You've got the recipe, and let's see what the recipe says. Uh, it says three teaspoons fresh thyme, three teaspoons fresh rosemary, one tablespoon dried ground rosemary, and eight cloves of garlic mash. So I'm going to just guess because I'm using these herbs for some other things. So there you go, that. And now, now I want to show you a little trick with the, oh, this is my oregano. Oregano is for something else for making. But I'll show you a little trick with garlic. It works really well. See this? This is a meat tenderizer. And this is how I do my garlic. Because what you want to do to get all of the medicinal benefits from the, from the, the uh, garlic, you have to crush it. And you have to let it sit for a little while crushed so that it will release these sulfur compounds. So I crush it. So I use this side to crush it. 
great. I love this. That's done. So now I'm going to put this in here. And I don't really measure my water. I just cover my beans about two thirds over the beans, two thirds of an inch. And I spray that off as much as I can. Then what I do is use water. I just love garlic. Use, uh, use the water to rinse that off. I'll just stay out here. Water. And I cook outside now. I spend most of my most of my day outside because this is a treatment that I'm doing. Okay, so now I think her stuff she's never heard before, don't you? No salt or anything, just and beans. I can't turn this. This is as much as I can turn. So these are just need to, if they have calcium um, that in there. I think we've probably got enough, but about, about one about that much water over the top with all the herbs. That's it. Into the Instapot. So down here. Why it's so jerky? It must be her signal. So I'm going to hit pressure. Then I'm going to scroll down into beans. Okay. And I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes. There we go. Beans are cooking. So we're already getting going here. So the next thing I'm going to do is, this is really delicious. And we have, we have a, a permaculture garden. It's pretty much permaculture. We do plant some things like the tomatoes, but, uh, and we're planning on letting next year, letting the garden rest for a year. It's a large garden. And our tomatoes just didn't do great this year. And, and nobody's really good. It was, we had a lot of rain and then it would get hot and dry, and that's just not good for tomatoes. But these are some squash. These are called rapunkate squash, and everything we grow is organic. Uh, this is one that's cut, and it's kind of like between a zucchini and a butternut squash, and it's delicious, and it's prolific. It's really easy to grow this squash, and we love it. So we're going to have it in something tonight here. Okay, so... Let's get, uh, get started with the tomato and potato nisoise. And this is just a delicious dish. And these are the last of our tomatoes that we're going to be using for this. So here are our lovely tomatoes. Beautiful bright color. There's some nutmeg that's going to go into this. And I am putting, uh, uh, the risk, the it's you can. I'm putting mushrooms in it because the mushrooms are so good for you. Here's some oregano, and I've still got some of those herbs there. And here are the mushrooms. These are just some. These are some porcini mushrooms, and I love the flavor of porcini mushrooms, dried porcini mushrooms. So I soak them in a little wine and water, and they're so good. It smells wonderful. So I wish you could smell it. But first, I'm going to have to slice. Well, I need to get my, my electric skillet out here. So now, I'm going to do this. And you can watch me do this. So I'm going to slice the potatoes. Well, first, I'm going to do onions on the bottom. A lot of onions. Okay, so now I'm going to slice. These are these are from our garden. These are purple potatoes, and you want to slice them thinly because you know you want to make sure everything gets cooked. So you don't want big thick slices. I mean, this uh, this slice is a little thicker. Thank you. If you 
Mark. Mark is the cameraman. We must thank him. And he's more than the cameraman. Mark sets, set all this up. And he's really good. He used to work on a film, you know, with, in, with film companies setting up sets and so forth. So right now, here's, these are beautiful potatoes, beautiful purple potatoes. So I'm just going to arrange these, just going around like this. So I'll tell you a little bit more about my experiences with the GI tract. So as I said, this happened back in 2002. So I've pretty much been suffered quite a bit with GI issues since 2002. But I will tell you, the nutritarian, whole food plant-based nutritarian diet was the key. And I learned so much living with uh, Joel and Lisa. They were so kind, they were wonderful. And then I became Joel's dietary assistant. And I saw people get well from all kinds of issues. Uh, things that would have been considered miraculous recoveries, but you all know, a lot of you all know about that now, about diabetes and heart disease and so forth. But I did see a few people that had GI problems. And Joel would ask me to talk to them because you know, I had the GI problems. And so I would talk about these, you know, try to help them. And, and one of the things that I learned with Joel is that uh, oftentimes people with a lot of GI problems can't, don't do well with raw foods. Now that's not everybody, but they don't do that well with raw vegetables. They have some trouble with raw vegetables. And so um, that was, So that was something I would talk to people about. And it, it does help to eat. For me, I can't, I cannot eat raw vegetables. I mean, my issues are really quite severe. I have food sensitivities. I'm unable to eat fruits. Although recently I've started being able to eat figs. We do have a fig tree over there. And uh, I've been able to eat some figs, like two figs a day, which is amazing. And um, I have been to, I can't, I've been to 11 gastroenterologists. And, and functional medicine doctors, which are the ones who helped me the most. Because being sick like I've been, sick with my issues, um, I've, uh, I've, I've picked up different, i picked up parasites, i picked up um, bacterial infections. And one of the reasons I think I got the parasites is because one of the things that the doctors did early on is they put me on proton pump inhibitors because I had I had a GERD acid reflux I mean, a thought that I did it felt like it and so they put me on proton pump inhibitors which helped a little bit but not a whole lot and then they stopped helping and so then I went on to uh, so I did that for 12 years I took proton pump, pump inhibitors and then I became intolerant to them I could no longer take them so over the years I became more and more intolerant to foods and supplements and medicines and so forth. And the doctors just couldn't help me. I mean, I literally had a gastroenterologist say, we can't help you. We can't help you. And at that point, I had moved into a townhouse in Arkansas. I had moved to Arkansas to work with uh, Walmart because I taught, I've been teaching since 2005, I've been teaching uh, nutritarian style culinary uh, education. And so I taught at, at, for the Walmart executives, interestingly enough, they, many of them wanted to learn how to do this. So I was teaching there and I was living in a townhouse and I started getting really sick. I mean, really, really sick. And oh, back to, I want to say back about the proton. Does that help? Because the 12, no. they do is they reduce your stomach acid. And so with your stomach acid is extremely important because it's big bottles and then yes. it's yes. um, it, it kills it, it does a lot of things. It has to break down your food and then it kills bacteria. It's what it, you know, back all kinds of bacteria, viruses. It, it it deals with it when they come into your stomach. Well, being on a proton a really good way to fix that bass is to do little packets of the bass and the potatoes. Yes. Enough stomach acid, so I ended up getting sicker and sicker. And then I lived in this townhouse and I got really sick there. And um, 
just went on and on and I literally could not eat anything anymore. And the GI doctor I went to wanted to put me in, uh, wanted to put a feeding tube in me, a button, and send me to Mayo Clinic because they just couldn't help me anymore. I was in bad shape. And uh, so I had, I had seen another GI doctor. I had lots of scopes, all kinds of scopes. I'd seen another GI doctor and he had suggested, now I'm putting some Kalamata olives on here. You all should have all your recipes. I did about half a cup of Kalamata olives and now we'll put the rest of the tomatoes on here and then we'll put the herbs and some nutmeg and this will be ready to go. So you see, once everything's prepped, it's pretty easy to put all this stuff together. Uh, but anyway, um, back to that. So I had had another doctor say that I should think that, that they had been using amitriptyline, an old antidepressant that uh, to help people with, with, uh, with IBS. And he thought I had IBS all the way from my colon to my esophagus, actually to my throat. So anyway, um, I finally just, I didn't want to, I did not want to take an antidepressant. I was very against that, but I was so desperate that I didn't want to go to Mayo Clinic either. And I mean, at that point, I was really financially pretty strapped because I'm five foot eight. I think I weighed about 114 pounds. So I was pretty thin and I was looked like a skeleton teaching nutrition at Walmart. And uh, I ended up not working there any much longer because I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. And I think I looked too unhealthy for that, which I, I was. And so I was, I didn't even know how I was going to pay my rent. It, I was in a bad situation. So I didn't know how I was going to afford to go to Mayo and stay in a hotel. So I went ahead and tried the amitriptyline and lo and behold, after three days, I started being able to eat again. And I had this friend, Mark, who's manning the camera. His wife had just died, had died a year prior to complications from rheumatoid arthritis. And we were always sad that she did not uh, go completely plant-based. They did go vegetarian, but she was still eating dairy and bread, which are the two worst things for rheumatoid arthritis. But anyway, she died in 2015, and this was now 2016. And my townhouse burned down. There were four townhouses and the person the next door smoked cigarettes and he burned it down in the night. So my townhouse burned down. Okay, so now we've got, oh, I didn't, put, I, there's no garlic in there. I need to put some garlic in this. So I'm gonna go ahead and what I do is I just, in the beginning, I take this garlic and I just hit it like this, just to break it, get it broken open like that. And, uh, and get a few of those garlic cloves out. I just hit them. And what's so nice about being outside, just throw all this stuff on the ground. So again, I'm gonna crush these garlic cloves. They're gonna just go on the top of this. It would have been better had they been distributed throughout, but the way it is. Okay, so the uh, townhouse burned down, and Mark was kind enough to let me move out here. It's an old stone farmhouse. And I came out here, actually had an RV, a big RV, and I lived in the RV for, I guess, about a year out here. And I started doing better because the landlord who owned the townhouse that I lived in was a friend of mine. And so the demolition crew down the, the place and it was they said they had never seen so much black mold before it was filled with black mold so i had been exposed to black mold for about a year that i lived there so i started doing better when i came out to marks and then i was eating all organic right out of the garden and so then I um, started working again, teaching again, and I started going to some functional medicine doctors because, you know, it was, it, 
it was just constant, it, you know, constantly I would have flare ups and it would be my esophagus, it would be my, my, uh, my lower bowel, it just was, it just went on and on. And so let me plug this in. Okay, so now this is ready to go. So the, we had to stop for a second because the sun, but anyway, um, I started getting better, but I started, I started finally to see the functional medicine doctors and I learned a lot of, a lot of stuff. There's some tests that they do now called, there's one in particular called the GI map, which is very, very effective. It's a, it's a PCR test. It's a stool test and it can see all kinds of uh, issues that you could be having. Uh, bacterial issues, bacterial imbalance, small intestinal overgrowth, uh, H. pylori, just different types of uh, viral infections, all kinds of stuff. It's a really good test, and it's something that was used in research labs. And it's just recently been made available to clinicians. So I have to do something that I'll show you, tell you about. Mosquitoes. This is called cedar side. <laughs> to a commercial uh, this is cedar side and it's cedar essential oils. And it's also, I put lemongrass in there and peppermint because the mosquitoes just hate that. You can spray it on your clothes. It just, it, it won't stain. It, it goes, it just goes away. Uh, right now it looks like I've got oil stains, but they'll just go away. And so I just spray myself over, over and over with this and I don't have a problem with mosquitoes or anything. I hate it. But anyway, it's uh, actually good for you. So anyway, this GI map test is really excellent for letting you know because a lot of one of the things I noticed uh, as I was teaching, I noticed that a lot of people have had started having GI issues and young people. Well, you know what they've been, they were raised on. I'm, I'm now 67. And so I was raised on real, you know, pretty much real food. And then my parents' generation were raised, you know, from gardens and stuff. So they were just starting to do uh, chemical fertilizers in the 50s. And my father was a farmer. He had big farms in Nebraska. And so I'm sure my twin brother and I were exposed to chemical fertilizers just when he would come home and it would be on his clothes. And they also were using um, DDT. So... That's when all of this chemical stuff started in the 50s, but it didn't really ramp up like glyphosate, which is like the Roundup. Uh, that didn't start until the 90s. And glyphosate is, has been patented as a, it, it is a, an antibiotic. It's patented as an antibiotic. It, and so the reason they've been able to get away with using it on our food is because it doesn't actually hurt our bodies. But what it does do is it damages our microbiome. And as we now know, because of all the science and the, the microbiome, we now know how important the microbiome is to everything, to our brain health, to our heart health, to our GI health, to, to our um, energy production, everything. And so the glyphosate kills our bacteria. And so even when it says GMO free, it does not mean that it doesn't have glyphosate on it because they actually use glyphosate to dry out things such as, as uh, wheat, beans, or your legumes, if they're not organic, um, uh, seeds, sunflower seeds. And so what they do is they, what they, they want to get as many, many harvests as they can. And so they grow these things sort of in northern climates. And so normally what they had to do is they would just have to wait until the until the, the plants dried before they can harvest them, the seeds and like the beans and so forth. So what they learned they could do is they could just go out there and spray that glyphosate, just saturate everything in glyphosate, the plant would die and then they could harvest it. So you're not escaping glyphosate if you do GMO free. It really needs to be completely organic. Okay, so now let's go on. I wanna show you how I do greens. And it's very important. These are all cruciferous greens. This is a horseradish. This is horse, these are horseradish greens. And what I usually do is I usually, when I go out, we grow them. So I just go out and pull the top part um, and then leave the bottom. But I'm going to use this whole one right here. And um, this is a, a uh, 
winter radish green. This is a red, wetter radish green. And this is another horseradish. This is mustard. And so these are pretty much permaculture. They're just coming back. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop them up. Wash them, but it doesn't look like I washed them. But I'm gonna cook it so it won't hurt. Not like I'm eating it raw. Okay, so. No, I don't want that away, you know. So I'm gonna start by just cutting it up like this. Because what you want to do is you want to crush it because the plant, the cruciferous vegetables, they they do not produce the enzyme, uh, the, the cancer fighting compounds without being crushed first. So what you want to do is crush them and they have to be raw. Like if, you, if I cook these without crushing them and releasing those, those enzyme compounds, that are the cancer fighting compounds that are in the cruciferous vegetables, like they're called ITCs, isobionates, uh, they have to make this. And so I'm going to help them make it. And the reason they do is that when an animal is eating them or a pest, they create this compound to protect them from the pest. But that's the compound that protects us. So because I can't eat these raw, so if you can eat them raw, you don't have to go through all this. But because I can't eat them raw, and some people cannot eat raw without getting bloated and having horrible gas problems and sometimes diarrhea, um, then cooking is what helps because cooking breaks down the cellulose. The cellulose of, of the, of the cells have a cellulose coating and it breaks it down and makes it much easier to digest. And I have garlic in there. I did some crushed garlic in there as well. So what I do is I'm going to massage this. I'm gonna break it down and I'll be able to start smelling the cruciferous. And you'll see it, I break it, it gets much smaller because what we're making here is we're gonna make a one skillet meal which is very easy, very fast. And you can do this with frozen vegetables. You don't, I'm just showing you how with all the fresh. And of course, what you want is variety because it's the, the, uh, the when you combine all these foods, it's, it's like a symphony. The nutrients are, are far more powerful when they're combined than just eating one single nutrient than just sitting there and eating, you know, some broccoli, and eating a bunch of broccoli and maybe some beans. If you had eaten broccoli with some carrots or some sweet potato and some squash and combined some several things, and then your greens, that um, really makes a difference. And with me being so limited in what I can eat and only being able to eat cooked foods, I have to be very, very uh, vigilant about making sure I get plenty of nutrients. So I have greens, I eat two meals a day, I do intermittent fasting. So I go 16 to 18 hours between my dinner and between my breakfast. And I make sure that I have greens twice a day and I do this process with them. And sometimes, you know, I'll do it, I'll put them in a container in the refrigerator. So they sit in the refrigerator and I have, you know, I don't, I, for several days, I have greens that are already prepared like this. And um, so this makes sure that you, you, there's so many, you know, uh, greens, especially cruciferous greens, are just are loaded with nutrients. They're some of the most nutrients. They are the, about the most nutrient dense vegetable there is. So now we've got these the pile of greens in here. So now let's just do some broccoli. And uh, put this up. So one of the things that I do is I am a, I'm, I'm a certified nutritarian trainer and so health coach. And so I help people transition to whole food plant-based eating because sometimes it's not easy for people because they have GI issues. Some people can transition beautifully and it completely takes care of their GI issues. If you've ever heard of the, uh, the medical doctor, Zach Bush, he's an also an endocrinologist and has a, he's board certified in endocrinology, um, internal medicine and palliative care. So he 
has had a clinic for quite a, for quite a few years now. So he was putting his patients on this whole food plant-based diet. He found about 30 of them just did great. I mean, they just completely recovered. And then another 30 did better, but they, you know, they didn't completely recover. That would be kind of like me if I'm in between the, the sec second and third group. And here's some green beans. And I'm going to cut these up in small pieces because they take longer to cook, but they'll cook fast when they're cut little pieces. Doesn't look very good. So, um, so the, the third group, there's 30. He said, it was, I don't know about 40, but 40% of, of, of them just didn't do well at all. Actually, some of them got worse eating whole food plant-based because of all the fiber and the cellulose. They, are, they literally couldn't break it down. Their bodies couldn't break it down. So he knew that there had to be some solution. And I knew that when I worked for Joel, uh, we had people that just we couldn't do it. They just would have so many gut problems. So... He knew there had to be a solution, so he developed a, a product that helps kind of reverse the damage from glyphosate. The damage does some pretty serious, glyphosate does some pretty serious damage. And so, and then with, but with me, I'm so sensitive to things, I cannot even take that product. It's called Ion Biome, and I cannot even take supplements. Most supplements I cannot take. So I did do that GI map test, and I did have H. pylori which, you know, I've got people get that easily from being on these proton pump inhibitors. I'm not on them anymore, nor am I on amitriptyline anymore. So now we'll do some, see how I'm doing this whole combination of things. Now we're going to do some yellow squash. And um, let's see, put this up like this. See, this is just, this is going to be a full meal here in this skillet. And this, this right here would feed two to three people. Because you're going to have it with beans and then we're going to make a delicious sauce that goes over it. And I've got a sweet potato. Let's do a sweet potato in here. I've got some other things. I've got cauliflower and different things. Oh, I want to put some of that in there. Replicate squash. So I just cut this, you know, like this. You want to cut this in uh, pieces that where everything's going to kind of cook at the same time. Be done at the same time. So I'm doing this thin enough. Mark, did you get that squash for me, please? It flew off the table. that end off. So now it's like these, like this. But you can see how it's kind of, it's not as yellow as butternut squash and it's not as sweet as butternut squash. I, these we let this one we let stay on the vine longer so it will be more like the butternut squash it'll be sweeter it's sweeter it's definitely a winter squash so but you see we've got broccoli we've got so we've got two cruciferous green beans sweet potato yellow squash and you know you make this up and you have it for dinner and have leftovers for tomorrow the next day and as you can see, the, um, this cookware that I'm using is a very special cookware. This is called Salad Master. Now, this looks like it's about done. So I've got some garlic on my greens. And now I'm going to put some of these herbs on it. Just on the sweet potato and the squash. And now I'm going to pour a little bit of water in here. And you can do a little white wine if you want. But I'm going to just do a little water in the bottom so it doesn't burn. Oh, I'm going to tell you about this cookware. This is called Salad Master. And I got it. Well, Mark got it. Times Mark. 
uh, got it because of my sensitivity to everything. And so this is made of titanium stainless steel. So it does not inter interact with the acids or the, or the alkalinity of foods. And so it is very, very, I mean, your food is very pure. It has, because other things like stainless steel does leak, does leak. Okay, we've got that going. So now we will make a sauce. So now to make the sauce, I do have a, a, a Vitamix, but I know not everybody has a Vitamix. And so the next best thing, other than like a blend tech or these really expensive high power blenders, is the um, the bullet. The bullet is pretty strong. I mean, I, I do a pretty good job with the bullet. So we've got you've got your recipes. And I'll just go down it with you. And it's on your uh, this is your simple delicious G bomb skillet meal. So I didn't put the mushrooms in the G, in the in the skillet down there that the one skillet the one dish meal because the mushrooms are in the tomato mixture. So you're still getting all your G bombs except for no um, berries. So um, this is called Rancho Robusto sauce and kind of like a ranch dressing, but good for you ranch. So here's lemon juice. And these are about the equivalent to three dates. This is date paste. So I'll put those in there. And then here is, um, these are herbs. Uh, this is tarragon and dill and, and uh, onion powder. Mark, do you want yours hot? Yes. Okay, I will make, this is going to be for Mark, this sauce, I can't eat it because of my sensitivities, but Mark loves everything hot. You want two in there or one? Two. So we'll put two. So if you like hot things, throw some hot pepper in there. He will love this. He drinks these sauces. What kind of make. peppers are those? What are they? These are serrano. These are the serrano. Red ripe serrano. And Mark grows lots of peppers out in the garden. And another time we can show you the garden. And uh, some other, I mean, I've got a lot of recipes, wonderful things. Okay, so now. What were you just putting in? Oh, excuse me. This was uh, pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, black seeds, and um, three dates, and one and one quarter cups of water. And oftentimes I will put, um, this recipe calls for navy beans but I think we've got enough beans going on. So you can put the beans in there or you can not put the beans in there. And here's garlic, this raw garlic. And you can see we went through a lot of garlic. So now it calls for one and a quarter cups of water. Might not do as much water because I don't have the beans. And I'll get a few of these herbs in here. I'll wait to put those in. I like to I like to have the herbs left. So I'll just blend that real well. So here's the sauce. How long did you run it for? I ran it for about two minutes. And so one of the things that I'm going to add to it, I'm just going to pulse these things in. And with me, my, my snipper is very sensitive since I can't eat it. So um, I'm going to put a few drops, let's say, three drops of lemon essential oil. And this is food grade lemon essential oil, as we do food grades. And then I'm gonna pulse in these herbs, you know, our, our mixture of herbs, put a little, little oregano in there, a little black pepper. Now the interesting thing with some people who have gut issues, um, 
pepper, uh, not black pepper so much, but uh, peppers like the serrano peppers, jalapeno peppers, chipotle, those things can even be helped to desensitize the gut. But with me, I have other, I have very rare issues because I have what they think I probably have nerve damage from the horse accident, which is really triggering a lot of my problems. But because I've had all these issues, I can help other people because about every type of issue you can have with your gut, I've got it. And I have managed to be able to transition to eating this way. Now, I'm just going to pulse this. Okay, our sauce is ready, so everything's ready. We're just waiting for the food to be ready. So I will, so anyway, because of the, my issues with the gut, um, I've learned so much because I really didn't know what it was. I had to try all these different things and go to all these different doctors. And so I've um, been treated for ACE pylori naturally. And fortunately, I was able to take the supplements without too much of a reaction. But there, I'm not, I mean, I've had clients that can't take supplements, can't eat most things. I mean, it, this is not uncommon. And then, of course, people with milder versions of it. So I really am able to help people come up with a modified whole food plant-based plan. Uh, sometimes it's hard for people to transition to eating beans and beans are so good. So I've written a lot of, a lot of things about the gut because um, I've learned so much. And uh, so I've learned, so what I help people do is help them formulate a special diet so that they can transition to whole food plant-based eating. Uh, as I was telling you about beans, beans are, 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 are like the biggest superfood there is, I believe. It's, uh, they greatly reduce your risk of colon cancer. They give you that, the Dr. Furman calls it the second meal effect. They make you very satisfied and uh, satisfied for hours. They're grounding. I used to eat uh, like a vegetable bean stew before I went to a meeting, any kind of meeting like at Walmart when I have to go to those meetings. And that was just grounding. It was amazing. And so that's really, that, that's the beans also, as I said, they greatly reduce your risk of colon cancer. They are very helpful for people with, um, with colitis, uh, with a lot of the lower bowel issues because they're very high in soluble fiber, which is very easy to digest. That's why squash, all the different squashes are really good for people with irritable bowel or, or colon type issues because it's also very high in soluble fiber, of course, unless you have a sensitivity to it, which you know, some people could, but it's, it's not a real common uh, sensitivity trigger. So what I do is I help people to transition to uh, whole food plant-based eating because being able to eat this way, the nutritarian way with all these nutrients is vitally important, especially with someone with GI issues because they usually are, have, are compromised in absorbing nutrients. So they need as many nutrients as they can possibly get in their body. And so I teach people how to make their food, how to, you know, food, a nutrient enhancing technology, help the food become more bioavailable for people. I also help people to transition to eating beans because one of the problems with legumes is that there's a specific type of bacteria, several specific types of bacteria that eat the uh, resistant starch, the, the different the, the cellulose and the different compounds that are in the beans that our bodies do not digest. And so when people first start eating legumes, they don't have that bacteria yet, or maybe very little of it. So they have to go slowly with maybe like a spoonful a day and slowly increasing the legumes until as, so then they will begin to cultivate that bacteria so these are just some of the things that um, that I that I help people with. Um, so there's sort of vital protocols. Uh, one is uh, is I mean the whole food plant based nutritarian style diet is, is absolutely vital, and I explained the reasons for that. And then there's the temporary elimination of different trigger foods. And then uh, you want to temporarily, when you're doing this elimination diet, you want to temporarily stop supplements except for the main ones like vitamin D. Of course, if you need a good amount of that, especially during COVID, I, I say I'm out in the sun all the time. 
and I take vitamin D 10,000 IUs a day because after age 50, you're, you don't absorb as much vitamin D as you do when you're younger. A methyl B12, most of people with gut issues need the methyl B12 because it's already, it's already been converted. Uh, and the kelp iodine and vegan DHA and EPA because that's anti-inflammatory. It helps reduce inflammation. And then the, the nutrient enhancing food technology, blending, certain types of blending, crushing, water sauteing, eating variety, and lagoon transition techniques. And then uh, lifestyle habits like the fresher the veggies, the better, and the farmer's market, and eat some lagoons with every meal. Starting with one, and you work up to one and a half cups a day. That's what Dr. Greger recommends. So, um, the reason I'm outside, I haven't really explained that yet, is I've, as I said, I've been to many, many doctors and I've done many treatments, which yes, they have helped me, but they have not resolved my issues. And the last doctor that I spoke with was very interesting. He's in California and I can't take many supplements or medications and I don't want to take medications. And my pancreas is not producing enzymes, it's producing zero enzymes. So I do have to take pancreatic enzymes, but uh, one doctor said that he thinks that I have something called reflux dystrophy. And that is when, when you have an accident or something and uh, it, it, your nerves, your nervous, the nerves go haywire. And since my sacrum was crushed, that's kind of Grand Central Station for nerves. And so he suspects that I have some nerve damage. And so he said that the only way that he knows of that he's that has worked for people is to just go and live in nature, and do a lot of exercising. And um, if I do a lot of rebounding on the rebounder outside, do a lot of hiking in the hills. But, oh, I'm so, so blessed to live in the Ozarks where we have all these trails up in the hills. So I do that every day and I get outside around 6.30 to 7 in the morning. And I'm pretty much outside until around 8.30 at night. And when it gets cooler, I probably will start sleeping outside in a tent some. Uh, so it has helped. It has greatly helped. It greatly helped me. I will tell you that. So something is happening. This doctor explained how, the very interesting doctor explained how the cells, uh, how, how, how the, the, the sun is so important. And I don't stay in the sun the whole time. I'm in the shade a lot. I get probably about 15 minutes on either side in the sun before, before noon. And, but I, you know, in the early morning, I'm out lying, watching the sun come up over the trees. And it's very beautiful. And it's, uh, I now do all my business meetings outside. I stay very calm when I'm outside. And um, so, yes, it is helping. Whether it will completely heal me, I don't know, but I am functional. And uh, so that is basically my story. And I help, and I do not charge a fee for my services. Um, I do ask if people can, if they can donate. I have a website, which is uh, robingeek.com, www.robingeek.com, R-O-B-I-N, and it's J-E-E-T, just like the car, it's my last name. And uh, I also am in and have a uh, vegan, whole plant-based food manufacturing business with a partner of one of the people I worked with at Walmart, left Walmart, and we went in partnership. And we did uh, produce a line of whole food smoothies that were under the Suja label that were exclusively sold at Walmart. And now we're doing something called Mana Muffins. We have a company called Enliven Foods. And so Mana Muffins are a grain-free, amazing, they're amazing. They taste, you can do them in a mug muffin in the microwave or you can bake them in the oven and they taste like a gourmet, they're basically a gourmet dessert, but they're only sweetened with, with dates. And uh, anyway, they're wonderful. They should be coming out and in October, we will be doing a chess market where we will have online fulfillment at www.enlivenfoods.com. Uh, That's E-N-L-I-D-E-N foods.com. And now after this, we will do questions and answers. And I can tell you more where I'm not cooking. And in a few minutes, we, I will plate the food and show you what everything looks like. Okay, so now we're ready to eat.
we are ready to eat. Here we have, this is our lineup here. So let me start to do a plate. And we do eat ample amounts of food. And I've got some quinoa. I just made some quinoa to have some quinoa with this. And we have some greens here. You want to get a little bit of everything. Then we get some of this rough and content squash. What I love about eating this way is you can eat a lot of food. I do like, I've always liked to eat a lot of food. Yellow squash. Look at this variety. I mean, this is like the ideal. Okay, so now, Let's do this with this. And see, I did put the mushrooms on top. I kind of forgot the mushrooms. I often forget things when I do these, but I did use the makeup for it. I mean, I'm just giving you recipes and then you can create your own things from these recipes, your own dishes things you like. Okay, so here's this sauce. So I'm going to put this sauce over these vegetables, over the quinoa, maybe some over the beans. I mean, this is, I'm not planting this like in a fancy restaurant. I'm planting this like at home, eating this at home. If I were going to plant it like a fancy restaurant, it needs a lot less and I'd pile it up in the middle. And so I'm just going to put a little fresh parsley on top. So this is home cooking. Ozark home cooking. Not what you would expect to find in the Ozarks. No salt. If you want salt, I always recommend you use Celtic sea salt and you just uh, do it, as, you don't cook with salt and uh, do it with the, you know, when you eat just the surface of your food and you don't get too much sodium. And um, you never want to cook beans with salt to make them tough. But here's your meal right here, full meal. You've got the, the um, niçoise, tomato potato niçoise, the one skillet meal with the vegetables, the beans, the quinoa, and uh, maybe if you want to have a little salad or some berries, you'd have all the G-bombs. Is there enough protein in that dish? I'm guessing there's probably about 25, 25 grams of protein, 30 grams of protein in this, in this dish right here. That's a lot of protein. So bon appetit, and I will see you up on the hill for questions and answers. Wow, that looked amazing. I think you guys are still here. I can't tell. I've never had to play a video. So thank you so much for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. And please come back tomorrow for another fabulous cooking demo with Donna Perone. Thanks, Robin. If you can still hear me, that was fabulous. It was